Hello everybody, it's Damon, Crazy Logics 007 on YouTube and Crazy Logics in the forums. Uh, I've got the garage open, it's a bright sunny day, we haven't had much sun. It has just been raining, raining, raining. Uh, and so, enjoying a little bit of the nice weather on my only very, very short time off here. Uh, so what we have here today is a punch 45 and it's a, maybe a little bit special uh, And we're going to talk about this and this is going to be the first video in my uh, The punch series going all the way from first covering first gens second gens <clears throat> and third gens um, If you're not sure this would be considered a second gen this uh, style of punch I do not have a first gen uh, which has got the more industrial style heat sink does not have any labels on it has all the labels on the back uh, But the first gen's got the harnesses built in or sorry the second gen. Sorry uh, The third gen of it would be the punch 45 HD and it's going to have Connection terminals there and then it's going to have the RCA's built in and a, and a connector plug a Molex style connector plug so uh, some very important things. Do not take these screws out. Do not until you've watched this video a little bit and then we'll, uh, the, all the videos are gonna cover a ton of different issues. But this Punch 45 happens to have the trademark instead of the circle copyright which is what is on most punch 45s of this style. So you can see the uh, circle copy right there. And so what is neat is that the first generation punches that I don't have an example of here uh, used a self oscillating design in the power supply. And then this second gen came out and it started using the TL494, uh, it may not be TL, but the 494 uh, oscillator chip, or uh, uh, pulse width modulation chip, sorry. Uh, and uh, it should be like this Punch 150. Now this Punch 150 is in desperate need of restoration. Uh, it has been modified and screwed up, and I'm going to have, have a bunch of work to do on it, and that will be a video. But uh, the first gen boards are self-oscillating, uh, and you'll see that here in a second. The second gen boards, you're going to see, uh, like on the on the Punch 45, well, they'll then all have uh, fuses in them, and they'll have this 494 chip for running the power supply. So this this Punch 150 uh, is a, definitely a second generation. And this one's going to be a mess. You can see it's got crimped up stuff. This RCA is way too short now and stuff, so it'll probably be removed and replaced and maybe used on a 45 or something. It's definitely not factory. Uh, and then these wires. So this will be one of the videos. This will be a project. Uh, we will fix this thing up and bring her back to the factory like new. Now, I was telling you, don't remove the screws. Uh, until you, I'm gonna put the screws back in this one. Until you uh, watch and understand, these screws love to break, and when they do, they're an impossible bear. I mean, it's possible, but it's a real pain, and I'm gonna have to do a video on those too. So we've got that there. So this punch 45 got the trademark. All that stuff has, still has all its four, four screws. By the way, the Scott D, big shout out to Scott D for getting me this Punch 45 that's in beautiful shape. We're going to test it and see if it's okay. Uh, but before you take your screws out, if it is an anodized heat sink like this one, which is not painted, uh, get you some drops of uh, three in one oil or penetrating oil to get on there. These are carbon screws, 440 set screws on these amps and uh, they will rust now if it is a painted one like this one this one's got all dusty and dingy uh, 
some a lot of times people put an extra coat of paint to pretty it up after they've scuffed it all up and stuff well these two screws came out fine the person that owned this before me broke these two top screws so if we were to take this off they did a no-no and they actually glued you can see the remnants of super glue glued the heads back on to make it look like it was perfect so that is a uh, a big no-no so I'm gonna do a whole video on how to get these broken off screws but if they painted and you can see these have been this this amp has been touched back up with some some new paint uh, you're gonna have to get in here with a little wire brush and a little bit of paint remover like some acetone and scrub those threads so that you can get some penetrating oil uh, three-in-one oil or penetrating oil penetrating oil works best to get down in there and start working on those threads to not be rusted up and stuck so this is one of the amps that will be uh, part of that series of how to get those out there's a couple different ways but we're going to focus on this one and this one has all its screws so they've already been pre-soaked in for in uh, penetrating oil and when you go to undo these super careful and you'll hear a click tiniest click stop put another drop of oil on there and then tighten it back up and go back and forth just that little tiny bit see how I'm just barely wiggling it and get that penetrating oil down in there so it's not broke and then it should get super free that means you broke the rust and got oil everywhere and then they should come out by hand if they're not get some more oil in there work it back and forth real gentle see how they pop and that's when they want to break if you keep going they will break if that rust is too much and there's not enough lube in all around those threads these are just tiny 440 screws and they are carbon steel and they like to rust especially because this back cover is steel and then because the cover is aluminum so it's a dissimilar metal so they like to form this incredible unbreakable bond that likes to just snap these little screws and so and then just work it back and then I've had this penetrated oil for quite some time so this one's not perfectly smooth okay it is <laughs> so that's the careful way to get these screws out you don't want to break them if you break them there'll be another video like I said so we got the screws out take your knobs be very careful pull straight out that's a friction fit save these these are gold these are they don't make them no more uh, so then we're going to lift up the end with the wires and get it just up high enough this end that you can slide the grommet out pull the cover off and ta-da we have the internals of this punch 45 now thing to note this board does not have a 494 pulse width modulation chip for the power supply this is a first gen style board inside a second gen uh, housing so I since I don't have one to compare I know that on the first gen boards there was some like white or just plain fiberglass boards uh, and then they eventually upgraded to the green with a solder paste uh, with a with a solder coat or a, a, a coating on it that makes these green uh, a lot of the first gen boards did not they did not have a uh, 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 the, the code the uh, the solder masks coating that's the name of it solder mask uh, so, this amp, wow, look at how dusty, dirty it is inside. So you can learn some things by the internal cover, too. See this right here? That's got a little spot of rust. That's right above uh, here. So I think we're okay because there's really nothing there that should get super hot. Oops, can I 
Oops, yep, nothing really should be getting hot there, so that's probably just where it happened to not get good paint coverage and rust. But sometimes you can see that had that been on this other side, uh, it may have been an indication that it had been ran really hard, the transformer had got hot, so you can look for those kind of things. Uh, we are going to separate out these wires just a little bit so that we're safe. I did, these were all cut off, like I said, again. Uh, thanks to Scott D for this incredible specimen of an amp. Uh, we are going to separate this out. Let's turn it this way. And we're going to do our regular old standard tests. We got our meter and diode check. And we are going to. And it, boom, charged, no beep, no nothing like that. No, it, and the beep stays constant. A lot of times it will beep, but that means it uh, charged the uh, input filter cap. So that seems okay. <clears throat> we can check all of our FETs for shorts, because we're wanting to power this thing up. So it seems to be the power supply has not got a short. Oh, that's me. All right, everything looks good. So, let's see about adding some power. We got negative, and I'm doing this on my current limited power supply. Sorry about no extra cameras right now. My bench is all messed up, and so I, uh, my that camera mount I had was just bouncing everywhere. Uh, so we're going to do this real careful. We want to separate these out. So brown and yellow are the right side on these. Black and orange, and this is for all the Rockford amps, are the right side. And then I'll tell you about bridged. But the red wire is actually the remote turn on. So we're going to clip to it. And we're going to make sure these all stay separate from each other before we do any kind of power. Real careful. Alright. So I'm going to turn on my bench power supply. And there is the little LED. We're going to see what happens. And I'm feeding it 13.6 volts. And it's only pulling 0.7 of an amp. And you can see the little light lit, lit up. I don't know if you can see if that shows up. I'm trying to shield it here. Yeah, you can see that. Uh, so, bam, it does power up. So that is wonderful news. We're going to get the RCAs out for the little radio. Set up my radio. <coughs> we'll get us a little test speaker. Got a alligator clip on the negative, and so this channel, the black is the negative, so we're going to clip to it. Let's see if I can get that more in the camera shot. Make sure this is all careful not to short out. So the black is the negative. playing we're going to get this positive wire there we go this is uh uh, disfigure, I think. Oh, leading off the remote turn on. So that side works. The brown is the negative over here. That works real good. And now to bridge them, you go brown from the uh, right side 
and the orange from the right side. And so that plays just fine. So winner, winner, chicken dinner. This amp seems to function just fine. Now I did not mess with the bass and treble knobs any, because uh, I'm going to do a little restorative work on this. I'm going to going to use my deoxit on them and make sure. I have to be really careful, especially on a, on an amp with the first gen board and any of the first gens, and then the second gens themselves. Uh, okay, so this one moves. And this one moves uh, they like to get stuck uh, and uh, so then you don't know if they're all the way at their limit one way uh, so don't put pliers on them or nothing if they're stuck get some deoxit or in a pinch WD-40 spray this down a little bit let it soak in and try to get that broke free so you can work it back and forth now these feel pretty good actually this amps not in bad shape except for the fact that somebody's Cut the wires too short, so I'll need to replace some wires. Uh, but this is really exciting because this is a first gen style board inside a second gen style case. And like I said, if it was was the actual second gen board, you'd see the four fuses that are for the uh, rail voltage, and you would have a chip in there that says 494 on it, and that is the pulse width on the uh, uh, power supply. So really awesome. We got a little working little amp here. This is fantastic. I'm going to clean it up and I'm actually going to install it to give it a little test run in my truck. Uh, I've got a single tin in there that I can run it with and stuff. And I need a little base in my truck. I've been missing out. So I will try to get a little footage of that. But uh, uh, like I said, big shout out to Scott for hooking me up with this. And this is going to be fantastic. Uh, I will do a whole bunch of uh, this. Like I said, this is the first video in the uh, punch series. Uh, and we're going to cover a whole bunch of this stuff all the way back. If I can get some of the self-oscillating. So we have one here. Uh, I have a punch 30, uh, which has the self-oscillating. I have a US Amps that has a self-oscillating. So we may throw it in kind of as an example uh, to help with the self-oscillating uh, information. Uh, and then I have a Power 100 HD that appears to maybe be self-oscillating. I don't know. i got to look at it. But i got a bunch of these videos kind of already started. And we got a whole bunch of things going. And then we will talk all the way up to the third gen. <clears throat> and there's a lot of these out. People love the HD. Uh, this amp, since it has the first gen board in it, would not be considered a cheater amp. Uh, they make more power than what they uh, were rated at, but they're not beefy like the the uh, like the cheater amps kind of were that, that that these have got the reputation for. And so, uh, uh, the. HDs a lot of people have a lot of people love them if you have one that works and uh, or it did work and you go to hook it up and it powers up just fine but plays scratchy and terrible that is due to this board right behind these RCAs this board these caps right here leak and they will eat up all the traces on these little ceramic boards and you'll notice it's got ceramic board for the input it's got ceramic board for the power supply it has ceramic boards for the output driver and the output protection circuits setups uh, those are one of them's one one's one one's the other i believe this is the driver and that's the protection and part of the processing uh, so if you have one any of the hd series that have uh, static they seem to power up fine but play static it is most likely uh, this PIM board punch input module uh, those caps are leaked on the 30s and the 100s uh, they are a output board that has these caps on them that leak and so the only thing you can do is get a replacement normally <clears throat> they
can get a replacement. They are uh, all super, super hard to repair. Um, they don't have many spots to solder to. You cannot use regular lead-based solder on them. It reacts with the uh, ceramic substrate. And PPI boards had these ceramic, uh, PPI amps had some of these ceramics in them, some of the old school ones. Uh, do not try to repair them if you do not know what, exactly what you're doing. You can get a uh, replacement. You used to be able to get, sorry, replacements. Uh, they're almost impossible to get anymore. The only shop that I know of that has any has stopped selling them and will only install one if they do the complete repair on your amp. Uh, and they were expensive. Uh, so, because I love this, these generations of the uh, punches and stuff, I did this. Uh, this is a modern two-sided style board. Uh, I, all the exact same components on it and everything all hooked up the same with a header that will fit in it really easy. Uh, the header is sized to still fit under the heat sink and everything once it's soldered in. But uh, it's a modern board, very repairable if something went wrong and everything. And so I've got these now and I will be making a bunch of them uh, so that we can make these HD amps, the 45, the 75, and the 150, rock and roll again. So I'm going to put the covers back on for now. Uh, did I show you on this one that it was broke? Yeah, I think I did. Okay. Sorry, I'm a little scattered today. I've had so much to do and so little time to do it all. Uh, so I'll try to get this one all put back up together and get a little shot of it running maybe somehow in my truck. Uh, if not, uh, we will definitely get it in the video. My truck needs a bunch of upgrades for the power wire and stuff, but it's got enough in it to uh, run a little Punch 45. So that is a little... Fosgate Punch 45. Uh, I have repaired one of these with the trademark that had this, the actual real second gen board in it. So if you come across any of these that have TM in it and carefully remove these screws and go in and you do not find that chip, you find the older board style like this uh, that does not have the power supply chip, the pulse width modulating chip, for the, the TL494. Uh, it could have a first gen board in it and, or it could have a second gen board in it uh, But this is really awesome. And we're gonna have a little fun with it. Like I said, this would not be considered a cheater amp then uh, While this did make more power. It wasn't quite as the cheater as like the HD the second gen board uh, a bit of a cheater, but from From rumors on the internet supposedly the HD was the true cheater cheater and it actually put out a whole lot more uh, I have not seen a comparison video between the second actual second gen Punch 45 versus the Punch 45 HD, which is the third gen. Uh, I would like to see that, uh, or at least Dino and some some other tests or something. But uh, maybe I'll get to that somehow, some someday. But uh, anyway. Love this little lamp. This is going to help in a whole bunch of series. Like I said, in this series, this will be the first one. And I will put, uh, I'm going to put together a, a bunch of info graphics and some shots to show everybody kind of how these amps progressed and stuff. And then we'll, obviously I have a bunch. Uh, we will get to fixing them. This one didn't need fixed. It just needs its power wires redone and stuff. Uh, but we will get to fixing some of these and repairing their common problems. And like I said, on the ones that no longer play, we will have now have new chip, new boards to, uh, to make them sound good so we can get them installed and build some old school stereo installs with these Rockford Punch amps. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like and subscribe. I uh, totally appreciate all the subscriptions. And that way, if you turn on the little subscription thing and you get a... Uh, turn on the notification bell. You'll get a little notification that way. I don't uh, it, It's gonna be summer before I put out tons of videos uh, Just because of my work schedule. That's all I'm doing right now is working this whole virus thing uh, Ended up being me working a lot uh, and get, losing a ton of my time off so uh, But uh, that way you can get notifications uh, for when we do more of this uh, Rockford the Punch series and like I said this will be the kind of the first little intro video to start off just because it 
had this neat little one here that I wanted to uh, show off and, and talk about and get everybody discussing in the comments and maybe get some pictures sent to me of some of the other boards so that I can show some of the things that I don't have. Uh, but when I do that big layout, I'll show you the amps that I'm missing and uh, the ones I'd be looking for if you happen to have a dead one. I'd like them to be dead because I'd rather do a repair video on them. You know, got lucky on this one. It just needs wires replaced. Uh, so it would be fantastic to get a few of the dead ones that I don't have. Uh, and like I said, thanks for watching. And 50-50 uh, chance there might be a little bit of a truck stuff at the end of this video. Don't, well, we're going for the, don't count on it, but uh, if not, we'll get it later. Thanks for watching again.